Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Bo's Happy Hour. I'm your host, or whatever the hell I am, bartender for the evening. Uh, we have a guest here at the tavern tonight. We got my former slave, uh, Will Finnegan. Sure. I got, yeah. Slave to curator, now I pay the electric bill here. To butler, you forgot that stuff. That was an important step. Yeah, no, no, what's funny about that is it's like, yes, I did human traffic, but they were only white, and there's only one person. The Irish were the first slaves here, right? Well, so let's talk about the inefficiencies of human traffic. Yeah, that's a little bit too heavy. Um, well, I've got an action-packed show here tonight, as you can see, with the new drip. I am now a college graduate from Columbia University. Yep, a uh, degree in philosophy. And I already won my first court case. Today I went over to, let me throw that up on the wall. Court case on the green screen. Yeah, drop it. Bling. Do you live in New York City and you need a lawyer? Well, at Dewey Screw and Howe, uh, I can make sure, get you out of a traffic ticket. I am already 100% one for one on all my, uh, whatever you call them, cases. Yeah, there we go. But uh, here's where like the legal jargon comes with not licensed to practice in the state of New York or anywhere else. <laughs> Girlfriend might not have her license due to... Then maybe an act of war in the half <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Man, which also rolls us up into something else that was kind of a big deal. The, uh, the but I'm, I guess we're going to roll into the whole, no, bundle of sticks section, which I could find. Where are we at? Bundle of sticks. Here we go. Throw that in the green screen. So I had an issue at school. I mean, I guess the whole school had a fucking issue because there was uh, riots at my at my school in Columbia. And uh, what was it like? Two weeks ago, I, don't know, I was up all night working at uh, Hamilton Hall, working on my last paper for for school. And uh, those motherfuckers were. It was like the last night of classes, so it was the last day of classes, so it was technically like the beginning of like reading week to prepare for finals. And, uh, I mean, they had the encampment going for a few days, maybe a week, and then that night, though, they were just being loud, like super, super loud, and then it got fucking quiet. And uh, when I left the library in the morning, I walked by, the encampment was empty, and uh, I didn't really think much of it. I go home take a nap, get up. And it turns out the fucking protesters at campus broke into Hamilton Hall and uh, they barricaded themselves in and they were there for like 24 hours. And uh, eventually the cops came in and arrested them all without the shot fired or anything like that. They just bagged and tagged them, roughed a couple of them up, which is nice. And I, from what I hear, it was like half of them weren't even fucking students. So that makes you think. Uh, and... <clears throat> What, what was weird about that was earlier that day I uh, had bumped into a friend of the show Gavin McGinnis and uh, he put me in contact with this guy from Rebel Media from Canada a guy named Ezra Levant and I did like a on the street interview let me get this motherfucker out of the way there we go and uh, uh, I did the interview with it and the dude was like trying to not goad me into saying shit that was too negative or whatever. I was just given an honest interpretation of the student body and the school, which, I mean, I'll say it now. Overall, my time in Columbia has been amazing. I've found, I, I've had an overall amazing experience with the, with the student body. Most people are very respectful, inquisitive, and smart as fuck. Like, the kids who come in here straight out of high school are goddamn geniuses. And uh, overall, like a lot of the professors have been very agnostic in terms of presenting the information, you know, like they try to be as neutral as they can and argue the other side as much as possible, steel manning the arguments and stuff. There's only been like uh, a couple professors I've had issue with. And uh, one, it was really more of the course of study than anything else. And I mean, I don't want to poison any well, but there are certain fields of study that are just uh, negative as fuck. Like, social work. No, no, not social work. This was the African-American studies class. Now, 
it's hard to talk shit about that whole field of academic pursuit because it's like being against BLM. Of course, Black Lives Matter. African Americans have a rich history. Of course, 100%. But the problem is, I took intro to African American studies, and every class, oh, there was two classes a week, and every week we had a guest speaker. And the, the guest speaker every time was a black radical Marxist. Every fucking time for 12 weeks straight. And it just, like... Um, you're not really getting the whole black African-American experience, you know? I mean, you could, if, if they show black conservatives, whether it be, you know, Thomas Sowell or Larry Elder, or, you know, like even different, like it was intro, so I guess they're just starting at the beginning, but I think you would probably want to get like a wide berth. The, the real field of study is, uh, it's just making activists. That was, that was his sight of goal at the beginning of the uh, semester, so... Truth be told, I don't feel like I'm speaking out of turn uh, by saying all that. So look at me being diplomatic. What I'm not looking like I learned how to do. <laughs> yeah, because if I was a younger man with less education, I'd have some choice words. And I do. I just choose them wisely. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, back to that. Traffic court. No, 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 not traffic court. Hamilton Hall and all, all that noise. So while I was... While they took it over, it was kind of like in the 60s during the civil rights era and like the Vietnam protests and shit, kids took over Hamilton Hall and they renamed it like Malcolm X University. Here they renamed Hamilton Hall like Hind University. Like they couldn't even be fucking original. You know, <laughs> at that I just don't understand. You know, and uh, the, the, the mix of protesters was rather interesting because uh, like the, like people were wearing the kafifis or kafafas, whatever the fuck it's called. And like one of the, like, like one of the lead, like they, they would have these chants that were like, they would, it was like four legs bad, two legs good. Like it was like this, the most, that's the Orwell fucking reference animal farm. You fuck at. Uh, man, look at me. I'm all fucking highfalutin now, but I read animal farm in seventh grade. <laughs> it's like an 80 page book. But no, it was just these mindless chants. Like if the guy, if the person with the fucking megaphone or whatever, like they could have told him to say anything, and they would have just mindlessly droned it on. And the thing about words is, when you say them enough, they become true to you. That's the whole brainwashing thing. It was on full fucking display. And I'll tell you what, if I was fucking like that whole encampment, like when the first time I walked by it, there was one guy, his name's like Ian or Ion or something like that. White, like hit granola, like granola crunchy kid, you know? Mm -hmm. And he was like, just, he was against the war, which, and I, I was like, you know what? I could be, I'm for that. I just want peace. You know, I just put what I, I'm for the bombs stop and fall peaceful resolutions kind of get worked out, you know, like, uh, and he was like, I, I felt like I was able to connect with him, you know, which was nice to be able to break through his song. But I'll tell you, if I was, if I wanted some blue hair pussy, like that would have been the spot to be like, just camping out, just smelling like patchouli, you know, <laughs> get like a they, them to suck my cock. That'd be, now I won't ask so questions. one of the Wiz Khalifas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good name for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, but, um, so anyway, though, after... The next day, and uh, I tried to get back on campus because that's where I like to do my studying up in the Butler Library in the Stacks. If anybody, if you're going to school or you end up going to school there, if you go up to the Stacks, take the elevator to the sixth floor, there's a staircase that goes up another couple. And up there, it's just nothing but fucking empty desks and peace and quiet. The other day, though, a couple, uh, four, four people came up there, that uh, four girls. And uh, I'd never seen them up there before. Not that you see anybody, because it's pretty much empty. And they were talking so goddamn much. It's not like it's the movie theater or nothing. <laughs> that an inside joke. Uh, <laughs> if you know, you know. Yeah, if you know, you know. Uh. But anyway, I was going back to the stacks to try to work. And they closed campus access. For, unless you had, unless you were either uh, a worker, professor, or you were a student that lived on campus, otherwise everything was fucking closed. So that was fucking something else, you know. And uh, so at this point, like, 
There's all sorts of people out there. It was fucking news cameras from all over the place. And uh, the fucking... I, 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 I start to get in it with this. So, yeah, this is definitely the bundle of sticks section. Because this fucking nerd with glasses and a fucking soft handshake. Not that we shook hands. He got up in my face for whatever the fuck reason. And I was just like, listen, asshole. These people are stopping me. I'm paying to go to this fucking school. Or at least the government is. And... It's like, I would have access to these facilities. These people, there's other ways they could do it. I think they could have maybe had a better message if somehow they were able to have their own sort of peace talks with the Israeli faction that's at Columbia. You know, I think that would actually have more of a ripple or an impact in a positive way than people just being assholes to one another. And as I'm saying this shit, the guy takes a fucking puff of his cigarette and he blows it in my face. Now, we're in tight whatever. Like, we're kind of close, you know, so, and there's people all over. So I was like, I, I let it slide the first time because I'm just trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. And then he did it again. And like, like and you can see this, this fucking snaky ass smile curl on his lips. And I just gave him a fucking just straight right hand, like well, it's more of an overhand jab. Caught him in the face. And as soon as I fucking hit him in the fucking mouth, he was like, oh, fuck. Like he knew he had fucked up. And then I had assholes jumping all over me. And uh, since, like, I, because I didn't get to engage the hips, it was just a straight jab. Uh, like, I had to fucking, like, swim through people. Like, I had my backpack on, but I was able to just fucking just, it was like a hockey fight. Because I wasn't engaging the hips, but it was just all overhand rights, right to this motherfucking head. Holding this other bitch out of the way so she's not getting hit. And I swam one guy off me completely. I, I really should have posted up to the fucking interwebs on the channel like subscribe and uh <laughs> to, to show the little fight and yeah man i i, I rocked that motherfucker pretty good and um and then like the cops try to grab me i break through him and I, and I hit him like once more and then then the cops were like were like hey settle down and then i just put my hands up and then got the fucking thrown against the the cop car and uh i got uh court summons for that <laughs> in the near future hopefully i'll be two for two on all of my uh court cases i'll let you know and uh yeah i made the bbc but it made it look like i was one of the motherfuckers getting arrested with with, with all the asshole idiots but say la vie and then of course i i was on other news nations I believe uh, that was the name of the outlet. I don't know. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have dropped that, but we'll pick it up and we'll edit it. No, we won't. <laughs> I don't know how to do that shit, as you can see with the green screen. <laughs> <laughs> but you're more than welcome to comment. How cool is that redheaded Jim that's hitting everybody? Yeah! Oh, that was the best part. Read those comments. He's definitely a Jewish. Or that guy loves Israel. Go, I'm Team Red Shirt. <laughs> Redhead, Red Shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Gingers be crazy. Yeah. World star. Oh man, yeah. Just pull up the comment section. That was that was fun. Yeah. And um, celebrities meet, read mean tweets. Yes. yes. Kimmel. Well, I don't feel like that was mean at all. But yeah, some people just yeah, the people. Yeah, some people. No, that guy looks American. But he loves Israel. Like, you know what I'm saying? Fuck yeah. I, I mean, I've got many great Israeli friends. Fucking shout out to my old boy Akiva head. out there. Fucking slinging red, slinging lead at the, at the fucking terrorists. They uh. thought you were a fed. They were oh, like, yeah, yeah. Was paid to hit people. And, and, or a plant, you know. And I mean, yeah. well, I mean, look at me. Also, for solidarity with the Jewish kids at graduation, I decided to wear my yarmulke underneath my fucking cap. And by yarmulke, it's just my Mets hat. It's the closest thing I have. Because uh, I am a follower and disciple of Christ, my Lord and Savior. Oh, the graduation. Bang. Yeah, better talk about that. So, uh, my kids wanted to fly out. My mom wanted to come up and see it, you know. And I wanted to just, you know, walk with the class of people and things of that nature. And But the problem was... Like, uh, because all those assholes did all that shit on campus, they changed things last minute, put the fucking graduation up at uh, Baker Athletic Field, where, we, where I used to play rugby, uh, the stadium, the crash stadium, and uh, they were talking about releasing tickets and all that type of shit, so I, and then I went to go find my tickets, 
no email. And it said even in the one email for graduation, I, apparently I needed my own ticket to get in. And since I didn't have a fucking ticket emailed to me, I just, I had to be there at 6.30 in the morning. And it's like, I'm not going to show up at 6.30 wearing this just to look like an asshole and walk back. You know, not, I would have taken the train back, but you know what the fuck I mean. That's like, that's, I, the, yeah. So I didn't walk with my class. And uh, to be honest, I, I, I mean, I know the kids in the classes I take, like I'm a fucking, I've seen a lot of kids in my philosophy classes for sure. But in turn, I, I, I never really hung out at any of the GS events or any of the Milvet events. Like my social scene was Mel's, RIP. And uh, yeah, after that place shut down, so did my sort of social life around campus. The good news is I've been pretty faithfully in the gym, as you can see in the fight. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's the positive element of it. But yeah, I, I would like, I, now I gotta find a new watering hole and 1020, I just hate walking. Well, you know what, if we walk down by Westside Market, there's no rats on that street. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we'll have to do. Yeah. I think it's what, one, 110? Yeah, 110. And yeah, 1020, of course. So, yeah, that'll be the new fucking spot because my homeboy Moose. Moose. He, yeah, Moose. Yeah, he's uh, he's doing uh, the bartending over there. And just the bartenders in general, they like, they just ask you what you had to drink because they're getting fucking shit house with you. So it's, it's pretty dope in that regard. Like, and the one guy, he, uh, I think he's Irish or he's just a drunk. Uh, <laughs> I know one dude's from like Australia, Mike. But the owner? Or... Yeah, they, the owner's Australian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Irish. But there's another dude, he's he's old. I know there's like an old man. I know he's guy. ethnically Irish. I mean, he looks his head looks like a dropped pie. So he's definitely ethnically Irish, but I mean, I don't know if he's... Oh, I thought he was like Mexican or something. No, 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 that's the dude, that's John Redcorn. He's... He's just a Native American, so I call him John Redcorn. Okay. Yeah, no, that guy, yeah, that's that guy. I'm talking about another guy. He looks okay. Irish. He doesn't look like he's a fucking Native American. Sorry, I didn't mean to be so aggressive there. But, yeah. A drop high. Yeah, a drop high, yeah. I had an English friend who was making fun of the Irish. She's like, their heads just a bunch of inbred fucks. Their heads look like drop pies. So, or they're crazy hot. Yeah, that's the thing about inbreeding. You know, you get the good genes or the fucking bad genes. Look at the goddamn uh, Icelanders. They're fucking, they're something else. It's like, it's like walking around with angels and like literal vodka Viking giants. Yeah, I, 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 I've been to Iceland three times, four times, something like that. I love it there. Yeah, my last trip, I uh, went with a bunch of recon buddies and uh, did this fucking long drive all the way up to some the second biggest city on the islands on the north side and uh, had a nice night out in town and then uh, had to make it back for my flight home and uh, yeah anyway Iceland it's a fucking time but it's hard to hook up but unless you're trying to hook up with like other travelers then that's a good scene for that because there's all sorts of like outdoorsy uh, adventure stuff that's what people go there for like outdoor adventure tourism go take a fucking helicopter into a volcano and fucking ATV. I wanted to go surfing while I was there. Yeah, there's a spot where you can go fucking surfing. It's pretty dope. I did the Blue Lagoon. I'm told, I mean, that's, it's a tourist trap for a certain degree, but it's one of those things where it's like, it's a tourist trap that's well-deserved. It's it's not a trap. It's it's just, it, it has its thing. But apparently there's a, other hot springs that are way better. And it like, you know, it's not like locals only, but it's like, it's, that's that off in the cut sort of a deal. How do we get to fucking Iceland? Let's go back. Oh, 1020. And then, uh, is there anything else? That's my new watering hole. Uh, yep. There's an Irish guy that looks like a pie that got dropped on his face. Yeah, yeah. A dropped yeah. pie. But, yeah. Yeah, uh, all, yeah, all things considered, though, it's, it, it's a good time. I like to play pool there. There's some dude who's always wearing a dashiki in there shooting pool. So, on a good day. Yeah, he's good. always there. Yeah, but he, he's only, he comes in for like his like, like break, because I think he's like a guy at the hospital. I don't know what he does at the hospital, but he comes in, 
He shoots a little stick. I'm two curious because I went there. You know, I told you during the out. day a couple times. Yeah. And he was there. Well, I mean, he probably goes there more often than that. The, the one thing that's cool about 1020 is there's like the, it's got like your day drunks. Like it's a, it's a fucking legit a hole in the wall. Hole. Yeah, it's a bit of a hole. And uh, under new management, because the last guy apparently was this fucking pervert or a prick. He was doing some gnarly shit, like filming people, or I don't even know the whole deal. But it became like if you just went there, then yeah, you had you like were a sketchy. Yeah, yeah, you were you were a fucking pervert by just association. It was a campus wide ban, and then yeah, it shut down. Uh, after that, oh yeah, graduation. Oh yeah, I didn't get to go to graduation. Sorry, mom, but whatever. Mm. Blame the fucking school and those asshole protesters. Vegas. Yeah, on the green screen. Uh, for my Vegas. buddy fucking Mike Dalrymple from the Marine Color, uh, he had his bachelor party in Vegas, and there was a fucking. It was. It was a. I wouldn't say it was a shit show. Just a lot of dudes there, you know. I showed up late. Uh, got like. I think people got in on like Wednesday night, Thursday or something. I got in on Friday and I left Sunday. Friday night, I got in at like midnight. Everybody had already gone out to dinner. I come, I, I get there and they're having a fucking time. And, uh, and fucking, they just got right into that. And uh, I ended up staying up, roll out to the pool the next day. And then we did this fucking all day at the Wet Republic where uh, it's at the MGM Grand. <sighs> Let me get a free room for the free advertising. Anyway, uh, and dude, so there was like 20 people there. I thought it was just gonna be like uh, the, the, the groomsmen, you know? I thought we were gonna get like some big palatial, dope ass fucking hangover type of spot, but it was like kind of spread out. I ended up sleeping on my one buddy's couch for uh, two nights. And, uh, but at the Wet Republic, so there's 20 of us there, right? And Dalrymple, he's got his rich friends that, that he met through work and then all his asshole Marine Corps friends, which I fall under that category, you know? And it's weird when guys who hear about you and they uh, want to say nice things to you, but they're fucking drunk is fucking annoying. You know, it's, it's hard to kind of hold on to that. Except for you, O'Leary, I really enjoyed our long conversation. It's like we're at the Wet Republic. There's, we have to scream at each other because the music's so goddamn loud. And it's like we're swimming in women, and but we're talking to each other like a couple of faggots, you know. And uh, uh, yeah, but while I was there, I there was this television show I watched with Sarah called the The Circle. It's a pretty cool show. It's like it was made for COVID where people are like locked in an apartment and they talk to each other through basically a fucking ring light or something, but they don't see each other. And there's like, hey, but I'm not pitching the show. Anyway, I saw the fucking window there hanging out by the pool. He's this like five foot six Indian dude named like Shaboop or Sh Shuby. <laughs> Shuby was his nickname. That's what I remember his name. I forget his real fucking name. But he was, he was like this sweet, genuine, kind of nice guy in the show. And it was, it was there. I mean, I ended up having a 15 minute conversation with him, him and his buddy, Michael, who's a real estate guy in West LA. And yeah, he, he, was, just a, he was just a good kid. He's working for the fucking government though. I didn't want to get too deep into that. Yeah. So I was just like, oh man, so if you're a smart guy, why? Sell <laughs> your soul. Yeah, yeah, well. You get the good ones. And you know what else though? Maybe, maybe that show was all big psyop. <gasps> yeah, ooh, conspiracy corner. Well, back on the topic of Vegas, how, how much was your your tab at? Oh, yeah! <laughs> Dude, the full. We got, like, bottles on bottles on bottles. And then, um, then like, they, these other bitches came over with a fucking big-ass thing of champagne. My buddy got sprayed and fell backwards into the fucking pool. And the our, our bottle rat, uh, I forget her name, but where next to fucking nothing. Like, it was like underwear. Yeah, it's a pool party in Vegas. I know, and but I will say this. She worked our party with such, like, elegance and grace because, like, she was having conversations, dealing with these drunk assholes, and it was just, like, would take time to where she's, like, really talking to them. 
and she wasn't slutty about it either. Like it, yeah. it was like she was just had a lot of like grace, like poise or whatever the fuck else you could say about it. Like I was really impressed with her. Yeah. So. Hats so how much off was that? Uh, twenty nine thousand seven hundred and seventy six dollars, dude. It was... <laughs> but like I... I was saying, Rimp, Big Rimp, that motherfucker is friends with millionaires and shit. So one dude just fucking dropped it on his fucking black card, you know? It's like <laughs> that was the only black guy at our party. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, and that wasn't just by that's just by chance. I mean, he's the racist. He only has white friends. <laughs> I'm, I'm the Puerto Rican. Mita Boricua, Yehu de Alimao. But I had 100% fucking Americano, motherfucker. Uh, what else we got going on? There was that. Well, you were going to the next section. I think it was Cops and Robbers. Oh, yeah, well, Cops and Robbers. That's conspiracy. That goes to Conspiracy Corner. Uh, but I was on. Uh, Motherfucking uh, Gavin McGinnis' show uh, a couple weeks ago, the May 9th episode, I think. If you have censored.tv, free plug, give me a subscription. And uh, it was, it, 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 the, the concept of the show is they're just going through news and cop stories and shit like that. And there's two cop, well, I guess there's typically three cops, and then the robber is Maddie O'Dell, because he was a Hell's Angel biker and been to federal prison a couple times. And, uh, so I was the guest of honor because of the little scuffle I got in and got arrested uh, <laughs> for uh, so whatever. I thought I was going to sit with Maddie because you know I'm technically the you know the, the a robber. Yeah, it's a fun show. But beyond that, there's not really too much else to say about it. Sarah News. I would like to uh, thank my beautiful girlfriend Sarah for one just being there for me. Throughout the course of this last uh, year, uh, growing our son, Joseph Casserly, in her stomach. Uh, and the thing of it is, though, I mean, I the, the, she's a real pain in my fucking ass. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, but she's not allowed to be a pain in my ass until we ever get married. So that's the, I, I, I promised pegging on wedding night, but <laughs> it's one of the reasons why we're never getting married. <laughs> Uh, oh, but you know what she fucking did? She took me and uh, the old Will, the slave. Uh, well, he's a free man now. I I, I, I should have marked him as one before he left my service, though. Yeah, yeah I was liberated. Well, you bought your way out. You worked your way out of slavery. Yeah. Sharecropper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you're uh, you got forty. What? What? Four, forty square meters. Acres. Well, I was gonna say meters in your apartment in Miami. Like okay, that's yeah. your, that's your uh, forty acres and a mule. Square, square feet. Yeah, yeah, forty square. square that's like four hundred square feet. But I was trying to do it in like metric because like uh, metric apartment sizes, they're smaller like that. They're not like they're not like you know eight hundred square feet. It's something like it's weirder. It's cubits or some weird shit. I don't fucking know all the glacial estates. Yeah, but his 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 apartment is dope as fuck. It's on South Beach. Like you could. He's damn near on the water. It's like a less than a two minute walk to the beach. And he's on the top floor, fifth floor, sees the ocean, and there's like glass uh, slider doors. Floor to ceiling. Floor to ceiling on both sides so you can get a nice crosswind through there. I mean, it's, and I can't believe he's only paying goddamn two grand a month for it. Yeah, it's only, yeah, I'm sorry. Dude. All the girl that watched this show, I'm sure. <laughs> the girl. The girl. <laughs> yeah, the girl, which is Sarah. <laughs> it's a real male-dominated audience, I'm assuming, because <laughs> I'm not that fucking cute. Now, you know what? I got a couple cousins who watch the show. Fucking Bonnie out in Hawaii. Psh, I'm with you, girl. Uh, what else? Oh, no, we were on Sarah. Oh, yeah. God, I keep getting distracted. Maybe I shouldn't have another beer. <laughs> So Sarah took me and Will out to dinner tonight at the uh, Salt Bay restaurant in fucking New York City in Manhattan on 53rd Street. Something. Yes. Also, another plug. Fucking next meal on you. Uh, and, dude, we get in. It's beautiful. 
it's kind of it's sunken in to to get into the restaurant like like a like a like a like a set from a show in the seventies like a little yeah. sunken down. It's and we, conversation. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It does lend itself to conversation. They got a DJ in the front, like on the on the on the fours and fives, and uh, we sit down. And I mean, they've got a fucking staff of waiters. It's like four of them do. Th- like one's dropping your fucking napkin, another one's zipping behind, filling your water. Like I felt, con- their their impact was always felt, but their present their presence wasn't really there. You know, like they were just really just watching and seeing whatever. Like they were always just on the job, you know, which was great. And then they were gone, and they didn't when they they were watching. Like the second I put a fucking napkin down, whoosh, fresh one. You even dropped your yarmulke. I did drop my yarmulke because I don't wear a hat at the table. Although, funny enough, my grandmother always said, only Jews can wear hats at the table. Now, English wasn't her first language, and she wasn't, like, which, it, I know, it sounds on its face a little anti-schematic or anti-dentite, but, but she was just saying yarmulkes. Like, that's what she meant to say by yarmulkes, that the Jews are allowed to sit at her table and eat, but they're the only ones who can wear a hat, so they get special treatment, even there, even in my house. Boom. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, hat fell down. But here was the craziest shit. Salt Bay was in the motherfucker, and when our steak came out, he came out, he cut it up, threw it in the fucking little hot plate that was burning some butter and shit. He even, like, did the fucking Salt Bay drop. I mean, it was, it was fucking dope as shit. And we did not motherfucking take a picture or a video or any of that shit. Like, and we were the only motherfuckers I saw that. And I'm sure we probably are the only motherfuckers ever to not do the video thing. You know, like me and Will here, were like writing a sign phone episode about it. Like, uh, like he's like, who is this? Doesn't want their picture with salt pay. Like, <laughs> like, like kind of like, uh, not, but it, the, the idea is like, he falls in love with the fact that Jerry didn't take his video out, you know? So now, whenever, like this is a Seinfeld episode I'm writing right here, right now. Uh, so now whenever Jerry goes to the Salt Bay restaurant, he gets all this extra whatever happens, and then he'll bring, who do you think would be the fuck up? Who would fuck it up? Because he would tell George before that. They would have that whole thing. Elaine, but, girls are always taking pictures of their food these days, so Elaine would have to be the culprit. Man. No, 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 but that, that, that they wouldn't let her fall into that trap. Like, she would, I would never. Like, it would probably be fucking Banya or something like that. Or, 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 or George takes his phone out to check something. Well, now this kind of blends into the Master of Your Domain episode where, like, who's going to do it first? Yeah, well, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Who's yeah, going to yeah. masturbate first? Who's going to take Who's going to fuck it up? But at some point, Salt Bay's going to come over and everybody's got their phone out. Right. Or, you know what? It'll be Jerry with his phone out for some reason. Yes. He, George hands him his phone. It's Art Van Delay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's got to be my uh, secretary sales. or Latex something. Latex salesman. <laughs> yeah, or the architect. Yeah. Yeah. Or selling matchsticks, whatever it may be. Brain biologist. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta fucking take the call, Jerry. You gotta take the call. Jerry. Yes, I do. <laughs> and then he's like, "All right, fine, fine, I'll do it." And then you know, and it fucks it all up. And then Salt Bay just never looks at him again. Yeah, he loses it all. Oh, but yeah, actually, with a big group of people, you know, it's like and then he grows the group mm. so over time. And then when everybody's there, it's like a. Clue, a game of Clue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but at the very and then at the very end, they just all fuck it up or something. I don't know. Either way, I'll take your notes. Also, write into the show. I've yet to get an email from anybody. It's Bose B E A U X S H H H. Yeah, yeah. Bose H H at Gmail dot com. That's the Bose Happy Hour at Gmail dot com. Uh, I probably should have put just B H A. Who the fuck knows? I could always update it, but I would like an email if you guys have stuck around this long. I think you've enjoyed enough. Come be a part of the show. If you fucking add your phone number, I might give you a heads up and give you a call on the show. Or you can call me at said times. That'd be fun. Although it's my phone that I'm using to record all this shit, so we'll figure something out. <laughs> I'll give you Sarah's number. Um, other than that, oh, okay, so... 
I'm sure a lot of people are asking, what's next? What am I going to do now that I've graduated from Columbia University? Besides practice law, do we screw them and how? <laughs> um, and yeah, if I'm just practicing, can I get in trouble? Just practice. Yeah, it's just practice. Talk about practice, man. Yeah. Talk about I'm on my way to Carnegie Hall. <laughs> so what's next? Well, I got young Joseph on the way. He'll be here in two weeks or so. Um, and then I got my buddy Dalrymple's wedding, which is on the, the weekend of the 1st of June. Uh, but that's obviously just housekeeping shit that I have to do. Uh, I was looking to get out of New York as soon as possible because of the nuclear holocaust that's on its way. I mean, fucking even New York City put out that PSA about nuclear war. Oh, fucking, yeah, like two years ago. I don't know if you remember seeing that, but it was, it was fucking ridiculous. Yeah, they put out a PSA, and it was like, if you're following that, you're a retard. Like, you're, you're dying. Like, I'm not going to go to any sort of, like, collection center or any of that motherfucking thing. I'll, I'm going to go down into the fucking, into the tunnels with all the goddamn rats, and I'm walking. Uh, yes, and the Jews that instead of yeah, uh, and walk my ass to Jersey, you know it's like I'll, I'll figure it out, but I ain't fucking I ain't going to where they're collecting people and handing out food or vaccines or whatever the fuck they're gonna do. Pieces of shit. Uh, that should have just been in conspiracy corner, but you know what? I to, obviously we play the show fast and loose. Uh. So what am I going to do? Huh? I have a job June 3rd. I'll be fucking back to work at the uh, airport. Fucking run security and I'll be training a class of people for uh, their guard mount and stuff. But that's just, that'll be my pickup work because I'm no longer getting that fat GI bill check while I'm, because uh, I got a fucking job now. You know, Well, not a job, I got the degree, so I, I'm not getting the GI bill. And, uh, I'm also going to have, uh, but at the same time, I, I have a friend of mine, good friend of mine, Jordan Bramble, him and I were friends for, I have been friends for 20 years. I was, I had just gotten into the fucking.